Hey guys, Shan this side and today in 10 minutes we will uh, quickly discuss about JPA Java Persistence API and which is generally required when you have to connect with the DB. Okay, mostly RDBMS relational database. So if you see these two diagrams with this we will understand a basic architecture of JPA. So this is your application consider this your application where your business logic resides. Now from this you have to connect to your DB. Okay, so there are two ways either your application directly talks to JDBC JDBC APIs. Okay, so these are the this JDBC provides an API through which you can connect to DB actually. Okay, and it's deals with SQL SQL queries. Okay, so this is generally an API and the implementation of these APIs are generally provided by drivers depending upon which DB you are using. If you are using MySQL then MySQL drivers you have to use. If you are using some other DB specific uh, database drivers is required. Okay, but your application is do not consider this because it has to talk to the API. JDBC APIs and these are just an implementation. So today you are using MySQL. If you change it to Postgres again, your application code is remain unchanged because you are just invoking APIs. Okay. Now then there is a thing called ORM object relational mapping comes into the picture and inside this ORM framework. These are the terms generally you will hear mostly JPA and Hibernate. Now what is this is JPA Java Persistence API. So as the name says that object relational mapping. So your application when you are writing Java applications when you use JDBC to connect to a database you mostly deal with SQL queries. So with this ORM what generally happen is you deal with objects. You don't have to deal with SQL, you deal with only objects and through this objects itself, you handle or manage your databases. Okay, so this JPA comes into the picture, Java Persistence API. So this provides an interface. Okay, so interface for managing your database through objects. Okay, and Hibernate, Open JPA, Eclipse Link, these are the implementation of JPA. Okay, so again here your application not directly talks to Hibernate. Uh, your application talks to the JPA and JPA framework has provided in so many interfaces. Okay, so today you are using Hibernate. Okay, if you want to switch it to open JPA, you can do it. Your application code business logic remain unchanged. Your application is still saying that hey uh, save. Today it's also working and even if you change from Hibernate to open JPA, it will still remain working because interface remains the same JPA interface one. Okay. Now if we further drill down to this ORM framework and you will see this important classes and components. The first part is your persistence unit. In Spring Boot, you can call it that it's an application dot properties. So what, what generally persistence unit contains persistence units contain information regarding your database connection. Okay. So everything like which is required to connect with the DB. What is the driver? What is the dialect? So your driver information, your dialect, which dialect you want to use. Okay. So all other information goes here in the database connection, which database you want to connect to and its configurations. Okay. So there can be multiple persistence unit. Okay. So let's say if my application talks to two DB, one is MySQL and another is let's say H2 DB, which is in memory. So I would have two persistence unit. Okay. So generally if you are using application dot properties in spring boot application dot properties generally can only uh, spring boot assumes that you have only one persistence unit. So if you have more than one uh, persistence unit means more than one DB and its configuration suggestion would be to use at the rate configuration 
class okay in that you have to define so there would be two at the rate configuration class you can write in one configuration right uh, class you can give the all the database one database configuration and in another one you can provide another db okay so persistence unit is the first part second is entity manager factory so what generally happen is this persistence unit during your application startup this persistence unit information is used to create an object of entity manager factory okay and here if you see it's a one to one relationship means one persistent unit one entity manager factory if you have two persistent unit mean two databases two manager factory would be created okay so here you can say that from this your uh, if you are not using a spring boot then you have to create some persistent dot xml file if you are using a spring boot let's say you have application dot properties file so from this configuration properties file and xml file this java object get created entity manager factory object so this factory object has all the information about how to connect to the database okay now then the next part is your entity manager so this is very very important part and here if you see it has one to many relationship means from one entity manager factory we can create many entity manager okay so whenever or in hibernate generally this is known as session so whenever you create an one entity manager object generally we say that you created a session and when we say that you created a session means you can now connect to a db okay so for one entity manager factory you can create many one to many entity manager suppose you hit one api slash get or slash certain let's say uh, insert user something any api so whenever you invoke any api what spring boot you know that uh, spring boot when the request comes it first take out a factory whatever it is created during application startup using that factory for that http request it create one entity manager at the start itself okay so now during that particular http request this one entity manager object will be used so what i mean to say whenever you hit a new api whenever you hit a new request new entity manager object would get created from the same factory and whenever i say that you have created a new entity manager means a session has been created and from this session you can talk to db also it has all the information how to talk to db because that is passed from the factory factory has that from the persistence unit now here one interesting thing is that for each one to one i am mapping for each entity manager there is something called persistence context okay so this persistence context hold the information about entity on which we have to work on for example you are trying to hit let's say that get user api so you hit this request so when you hit a request means one http request means it will create one entity manager and we know that for each entity manager persistence context will get created so we have created a persistence context also now in this get user so means it has to work on this entity user entity okay so whenever i say entity means it's a object which is equivalent to a table in a database so get let's say it's a user entity for in this case there would be one user entity so i am trying to fetch a user okay so what it will do is whenever it uh, fetch a user or it will work on a user entity that first is stored here itself also okay so it holds the information of whatever the entity it gonna work on because through this object only you gonna insert into the db right you gonna uh, fetch from the db you gonna insert into the db through this object because this is a session actually okay so entity manager is nothing but you can say that uh, an api is like save insert right fetch all it has exposed all the apis okay this is a part of jpa 
and hibernate itself generally provide the implementation for this okay uh, but what i'm trying to say that whenever this entity manager is created persistence context is also created for each entity manager and through this only we gonna fetch we gonna insert we gonna update particular entity so whatever the entity this entity manager is gonna work that is stored inside persistence context so till this object is alive persistence context is alive and that's where the first level cache comes into the picture like when whenever a query comes let's say the first time call come is insert for user one so it you use this object entity manager object one you use this object to store the user entity one so you know that for each object persistence context would be created so this user one would be stored into this persistence context when you are trying to do get user one same one before even reaching to the db if you are using the same object entity manager object then what would happen is it will have the same access to the persistent context it will not get purged yet because we are using the same object okay so it knows that yes i have user one present into persistence context so it will return from here itself it will not even go to db so persistence context helps into first level caching itself okay and this pers persistence context is highly tied up with the entity manager object and entity manager object is one for each http request so in one http request if you are doing insert and then you are doing get the same object so for the first time you you might be doing db hit but the second time since you are using the same entity manager object the same persistence context you would be used and there might be a hit cache it okay so if you are have a different entity manager object then it will not have access to this one it will have its own persistence context and uh, then it would be a db hit because they do not share a persistence context okay so this is i know this become very rough but this is the uh, very very high level of jpa and its architecture but i have covered an in depth in the concept and coding uh, you can check it out and i have shared the demo also so that will clarify you much better okay guys thank you bye